Well, welcome everyone to another video in our series of assistive technology related videos. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite topics and that's head positioning. Specifically, we're going to talk about a little component that is available on many head supports on the market and that is a sub occipital support. Let's take a look. So let's review anatomy just for a moment. On our skull, we have many areas that we can bring a support to as a part of a head support system to help maintain the head in as neutral an alignment as possible. So we have the back of the head and that's where most supports are, right at the occiput. Then inferiorly, we have the suboccipital shelf and the jaw underneath the skull. Anterior, we have the forehead, and then laterally, we have the sides of the head and the sides of the jaw. You can see here in this picture where the occiput in relation to the sub occipital shelf is. So the occiput, if we put support there, contacts the upper rear of the head, but there's really nothing about that pad that's going to prevent forward flexion of the head or collapse into hyperextension. Whereas the sub occipital shelf, we can provide support in this area that can actually cup the, let me get my hand here, cup the base of the skull so that we have a support surface. And that can really be helpful in helping the client keep their head upright, but also it can reduce neck hyperextension. If this sub occipital support, and you might want to go ahead and kind of grab the back of your head here is in just the right spot, it's really just about impossible to hyperextend your head. So as a part of a head support, you can see on this picture here, we can choose to incorporate a sub occipital support. Here, uh, picture to the upper right, we have an Ultra from Stealth Products, and there is an occipital support, a separate sub occipital, and you can see there's three sizes shown here, as well as lateral supports. So we can custom build, come at this by somewhat of a modular approach to best meet an individual's needs. Now, I always think it's helpful to look at a case study when we talk about things like this. So let me introduce you to my friend, Hannah. Hannah, as you can see in this picture, is not positioned very well. Well, to be honest, she's actually positioned very well from her shoulders down. And that's always very important to examine. Is this person well positioned? Because if the pelvis and trunk aren't in a good position, neither will the head. But all that was good. Her head, however, is propped on her upper right chest. You can see she's already using oxygen. I'm sure this is not helping her breathing, her swallow, or her visual regard. I was seeing Hannah for access to a communication device. She certainly wasn't able to see that communication device mounted in front of her either. So I knew we needed to look at a different head support. Now the head support she has here is a fairly basic, well padded, contoured head support. It wasn't adequate for her particular needs. Here she is in a different head support and we have a separate occipital, lateral and sub occipital support. And the sub occipital support is a very critical aspect of this solution. So the right lateral support, right side of her head, right above her ear there, in combination with the right portion of the sub occipital pad are keeping her from laying on the right side of her chest. It's bringing her up to a neutral position. The sub occipital also prevented her from collapsing into hyperextension because as we brought her head up into neutral, that's what her head wanted to do. So this improved head position also allowed Hannah to independently access a switch using the left side of her head, as well as keep her head upright and looking forward. And again, just a quick before and after, you can see there's a huge difference in her head position. This was a modular approach. This required occipital lateral as well as sub occipital support, but the sub occipital pad was a key portion of the solution for Hannah. 
And one more quick example, this is Jonathan. You can see on the left side that he is really hyperextending. He's looking at the ceiling. His head's rotated a bit. This is really setting off his extensor tone. It's placing him at risk of aspiration and choking. And his breathing probably isn't optimal either. But with a different style head support here on the right, particularly that sub-occipital support in combination with placement of the occipital pad. The relationship between the placement of the occipital and sub-occipital are very, very important. It's going to vary person to person because it depends on their unique anatomy and the distance between the back of their head and the upper neck. Uh, but you can see with the correct placement, he is now aligned. He's no longer hyperextending and he is also able to activate a switch by the left side of his head. So suboccipital support, well, head positioning requires really good positioning of the entire client. We have to do a full on seating evaluation to make sure we're really meeting this person's needs. But then we bring in the head support and that head support can provide posterior, lateral, and that suboccipital support as needed for an individual. That posterior support, including suboccipital support, is sometimes what's required in order to provide more of that inferior support, give the head something to rest on, stability, a degree of lateral support on either side of the neck or even the jaw a bit, depending on the size of the suboccipital pad, as well as preventing that neck hyperextension. I hope that this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.